you got to have a smooth flowing network and it, it needs to be designed correctly too. But again, it's, it's very critical to understand all that. Otherwise you're not going to have any operational success. Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today, we have a fun idea episode where we're going to be talking about understanding network assessments. So to help us walk through this, we have Joe Frank, who is an industrial network engineer at Eco. So how you doing, Joe? Good morning, Chris. How you doing today? Oh, brother, I am excited to walk through this. Nothing gets me pumped up in the morning like industrial networks, man. How about you? <laughs> not too bad. It's a, it's a good day. Not sure if that makes me weird or not, but uh, hopefully my man Kay is out there listening to this one. He got a little chuckle out of that. So uh, <laughs> anyway, get our listeners started, Joe. When we talk about industrial uh, network assessments, uh, what what is typically covered in that, man? So a, a network assessment really is basically a an assessment of what products they have on the floor as opposed to, or well, really it's it's the switches they have on the floor, but it also includes the physical layer. So you're talking grounding, you're talking cabling, um, and you know that there's different types of cabling out there. You got fiber, you got copper, um, you, you even have some coaxial. But nowadays we try to stay to coaxial or um, we try to stay to Ethernet cable and we try to stay to fiber. So we would go through an assessment and collect switch data, um, unmanaged and managed switches, both. We also would look at the cabling, the type of cabling, whether it be Cat 5E, Cat 5, Cat 6, um, just the different types of, of cabling that they have there, the different types of fiber that are involved. And we also look at excessive wiring. So that's a big thing that's in the assessment is looking at how much coils do they have, you know, bundled up into a cabinet that has a, that definitely has an effect on the latency with your communication between switches and other devices. And then the other thing, the last thing we really look at is um, environmental conditions. So is the cabinet full of dust? Um, you know, is it getting the proper air conditioning it needs to be ventilated good and, and keep the quality of air inside the cabinet, you know, excellent as well. So that's kind of the typical things that you would cover in a network assessment. Okay. Now, from an assessment, it kind of sounds like you, you're walking through, I, I'm correlating a little bit to this to an IBE, like an installed base evaluation. Is it is it like that or is it really an assessment uh, separate from that? So it is very close to an IBE, which is, yeah, an install based evaluation. The network one obviously solely concentrates on the network equipment and what's involved. So. Gotcha. Okay, man. Thanks for, for clearing that up. So yes, looking at the cables, looking at the switches, uh, the excessive wiring and the environmental concerns. So. Um, yeah. And one other thing too, is we look at security as well. Like, um, I kind of forgot about that. It's, it's where we look at if, is the cable or is the, um, is the cabinet locked or is the door locked to the room that these cabinets are actually located in? Do they have little port locks and all the open ports that aren't being used? Things like that of that nature. Right. So security is also a, a a, a minor part of what we're actually collecting in the network assessment, but I think it solely focuses on the switches. Gotcha. Okay. So by the security being more on the physical side for security. Yeah. It's more of a, a visual, right? Like more of a, um, you know, Hey, you know, you, you know, getting into this room, we have locks on it or, you know, this cabinet, Oh, I could just open this cabinet right up and I can just plug right into this switch. It's that kind of thing. Just a, just a physical looking at, seeing what you know obviously i'm not going to be able to see the security side of a switch unless i actually get into the switch to see if like ports are turned off and that kind of thing so this network assessment is very um non-intrusive so you don't really get into the switch you're not really plugging into the network it's basically just a visual of what's there got you okay well that that man that really helps thank you for walking that through for our listeners so mm -hmm. so 
inside of a, uh, an industrial facility, who typically is involved with, with doing these assessments? Um, the typical people that would get involved is obviously myself, a network engineer. Um, also, you would probably get someone from the IT department in, you know, wherever you're at, wh whichever customer you're at. Uh, or, and you might even get somebody from maintenance, either be head of maintenance or, you know, a very, a very um, experienced maintenance guy that's been there for a long period of time. Whoever really is going to go out there and um, manage these switches, right? Replace them, um, keep them up to date, adding, you know, devices to them, that kind of thing. So those are the people that are really going to be involved. Gotcha. Okay. So we've had several conversations, Joe, just so you know, where we're talking about IT and OT, the convergence there to how things are starting to really get crossed in plants and come together, which is, you know, it's good, but it also presents its challenges. So how do those two worlds intertwine when you're talking about network assessments? So and that, this is a very, very important question, and it's a very good answer to why we have to have this convergence. And the one thing you need to understand first is there is a level in the plant that is called the demilitarized zone, which is where you would draw the line between IT and OT. Below the DMZ, that's what it's abbreviated as would be your operating side where that would be all of your switches and communication on the plant floor. Above the DMZ would be your IT department, your um, you know switches for enterprise, like everybody's desks and that kind of thing, right? So what you really need to understand is, is that nowadays what we're trying to do is they're trying to get a lot of the information from the OT side, the operating side, up into that enterprise infrastructure so that more people can see this data so they can analyze it, um, interpret it, and then that way they can find better ways to uh, perf uh, increase the performance of these machines in the future. So it's, it's very important. It's getting to be a very common thing. And I think it's, it's definitely going to be the way of the future. And everybody really needs to understand that there is going to be this convergence of ITOT for I'm going to say the least, at least the next like 25 years, it's going to be a very big topic because there needs to be um, a very strong relationship between IT and OT. And a lot of the IT, um, if you would understand this, a lot of the IT guys really focus on, you know, fixing things that are broken or communication issues on the enterprise side. But when they start moving down to the OT side, they also need to understand that there is a very strong sense of um, time concern where they need to be on this stuff a lot faster than when they work on things in the IT enterprise side, because they really do have some time on the IT side, as opposed to the OT side, it needs to be running 24 right. seven. So um it's a very important topic with IT and OT. They have to be, this has to work in the future going forward for, for a lot of process. So, I mean, how are the priorities different between IT and, and OT? You mentioned the speed, you know, making things a priority from an IT standpoint. Sometimes it's, I guess speed is, is not the priority for them. Well, so it's going to be speed is going to be a priority for them if they're working on something on the OT side. Right. I mean, you, you, you've been in the field, I've been in the field. We've all seen it where, you know, if a machine goes down, the customer, we got to get this up. We got to get this going because we're losing money. Um, but it's very important that they get that fixed right away. And I don't, I don't think it has that mindset yet because they're still in that world of, Oh, well, this printer's down over here. Well, I'll get to it tomorrow. Do you know what I'm saying? So they need to understand that, you know, they got a printer down. Yeah, that's one thing you can work on that tomorrow, but you need to make sure that you prioritize. And whenever there's something wrong with the factory floor that makes your company money, you need to get that done. And that's where IT lacks their type of experience. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, so. and in previous episodes, Joe, we talked about, I, I think it's called, and you don't, don't get, don't get mad at me if I get it wrong, but the CIA, the CIA triad where they're talking about IT, what the priorities are and OT, what the priorities are and IT, right. if I remember correctly, it was confidentiality, integrity, and availability yes. where OT it's availability, integrity, and confidentiality. You kind of, right. you kind of flip it. So 
you flip that, it. That's right. That's exactly right. Yep. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Just trying to to pull pull back from the memories, man. You had to forgive me, but I, I, I felt <laughs> like that's where you were talking about right there. Yep. Cool. Very cool. Well, thanks, man. You and you mentioned earlier when you were talking about machine performance, right? And a lot mm-hmm. of times people think about output. How much more can I get out of my process? But what about network performance? So what are some ways that the, the end users, if you're listening out there and you're a plant, what what could they focus on to enhance their network performance that at the machine level? So one thing that I've noticed in the field a lot is at a machine level, there are a lot of unmanaged switches being used, which is not a terrible thing, but at the same time, you have a lot of traffic that's going to places where it doesn't need to go. And it's it's going to bog down the network and it's going to affect the communication between like a PLC and drives or whatever commu- whatever devices you're talking to. So um, with managed switches, you are able to filter out that traffic or you can logically set up what's called a vlan which is a virtual lan um so what you would do is you'd set up this virtual lan and what it would do is it would keep all those devices in that specific little lan and it would just have those guys talk to each other and that's first priority so that has first priority over anything else in the switch so those guys are going to solely talk to each other and ignore anything that's coming in and out of the data unless you want it to. So you could actually set it up so that you could talk to a specific device. So utilizing a managed switch to segregate traffic is very important at a at a machine level to keep the performance of the machine. Um, I guess it's integrity, really, is what you're doing. So what you, you said you're seeing a lot of unmanaged switches used. So yes. Why is that? Because I mean, to me, I mean, you you just walked through three or four great reasons why a managed right. switch should be the only type of switch you should have in an industrial environment, and it made all the sense in the world. So, why do you see the unmanaged out there? Um, I think number one, people don't understand managed switches, which is a big, big problem. Number two, cost of a managed switch is a lot more expensive than an unmanaged switch. Um. And that's probably the two biggest reasons I would say. And I guess they just they just don't understand it. And I've I've actually had to sit down with customers before and just train them and say, hey, look, this is what our managed switch will do for you. And then the light bulb goes off. Oh yeah, that's great. Like we now we completely get it. We understand why we should be using managed switches. But there's a lot of customers that I and I, I would say it's a cost thing, but again, they don't understand how it works. So they really need to come up to speed on that. So when you're when you're sitting down and let's say you're sitting down with somebody who they're, maybe they're not super technical like me. <laughs> so you can just say you're talking to me. All right. <laughs> when it comes to network switches and you want to, to walk through the, those key areas of why I should consider a managed network switch in my industrial plant. You know, what are you talking about in those situations? So what I would basically rely to those people or relay to those people really. And what it is, is they need to understand that the the one thing that, that a maintenance person gets very, I don't want to say upset about, but they get very confused about is the fact that they don't like the fact that the plant land or the IT side is going to be plugged into like one of these switches that's on their machine. They don't, they don't really like that because they don't, they understand that plugging this thing in, could be a problem in the future, which nine times out of 10, it happens. I mean, I don't know how many times I've been woken up at three o'clock in the morning saying, oh, you know, our machine's down. Can you help us? You know, what's going on? Well, what changed? Oh, well, we plugged the plant land into the switch while I'm plugging. Like, did it fix the problem? Oh yeah, we're up and ha- we're up and running again. So there's a lot of problems with that in particular, where IT thinks they can just go in and tap right into a, an unmanaged switch and say, okay, well, this is on the network now. We're good when really it's flooding that switch and now you're going to have all sorts of performance problems on the machine. So to get them to understand that, Hey, if I put in a managed switch here, that kind of keeps the plan, the plant land from being connected into your devices and your machine. So we can segregate those two. So it's basically like, he's not even there. So that's, that's very important 
especially to maintenance people and to people that don't understand that because they know that a, a network can get overloaded and they know that a machine could be taken down from it, but they just don't understand that they can put a switch or something else in there that will actually say they can still have that connection and everything will run perfectly fine, just like it used to. Very so, good. So yeah, understanding that is a, is a big concept. And I think a lot of people misunderstand that. Gotcha. Okay. Now also there, there's so, so much data moving in these plants now, you know, how does mm -hmm. that data traffic factor into these decisions, Joe? Yeah. So data traffic, that's, that's a big thing too. And, and again, I'm going to go back to the, the VLANs. Um, if you can possibly get individual machines on these separated networks where they're logically separated and they're VLANs that will, it will, it will keep the performance where it needs to be. And basically the IT side or the plant side is going to be just listening. So they're just going to be gathering that data, not a, as opposed to flooding the network with the data. You know what I'm saying? Right. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, that, that, that helps a lot. And I guess just having those managed switches just is that much more of an enhancement to that network to, yes. to handle that problem. Yes. And it also keeps the traffic. When you set up a VLAN, it keeps that traffic within that VLAN. So if you have, let's just say four or five drives and a PLC on one managed switch, and you've got them all on one VLAN, that's keeping all that traffic right there in that one switch. It's not going anywhere else. It doesn't go from that switch to the next switch up. It stays right there unless you set it up so that you can listen to that VLAN. So it keeps it segregated from blasting all that information out throughout the plant. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Yep. Okay. So I guess, so. I mean, that comes down to like network design and architecture. So people yes. like, you know, network engineers, I'm assuming this is kind of the stuff you get involved with, right? You, you find yep. these problems where the data is colliding. And, you know, why and understanding how the data needs to move and then design the system to facilitate that. Yep. Perfect. You make it sound so easy, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been here for a long time, so it's it just comes natural after a while. I hear you, buddy. Well, you're doing a great job. And, and you, you mentioned earlier when you were talking about the, the key areas uh, that, that really an assessment covers, you talked about security. And that's mm -hmm. a big topic, particularly for with a lot of our listeners. We, we, we've covered security in several different areas of eco -SY. So what can someone do to understand the security risk that they may have right now, you know, as their network sits uh, today? Um, again, they can look for those small item things like keeping those cabinets locked where you have access to plugging into those ports. Um, they do sell these little port locks you can plug into the fronts of the, port, the physical ports, right? So that you can keep people out of them. Um, you can also, when you're in the switch configuring the switch, you can turn those ports off when they're not being used. And that way, if somebody does come in and plug in, that they're not going to affect that network and have, you know, if they plug in with the same IP address as one of the devices, obviously you don't want a crash, right? Which you will crash. I hadn't heard that one, Joe. So you're saying, you know, I've heard about the physical one where you like, you literally can't plug anything in because it's a block there. So you're yep. saying inside of the managed switch, you can configure it where that's basically a dead port. Yes. You can enable it and disable it. You can actually turn the port on and off. Yep. Awesome. What, what else? Um, as far as security goes, uh, you could also do, I know, I know we actually offer another service and I, I know this doesn't apply for everyone, but, um, in the state of Virginia, as you know, Chris, Eco is a Rockwell distributor. We also, um, do what's called a security posture survey, which is another service that we offer that you would actually go in. And as long as they have managed switches in certain locations of the plant on the operating side, we are able to go in, be non-intrusive, and collect that traffic data for like 20 minutes per switch. And then we gather all the data, we give it to Rockwell, and then Rockwell actually gives us a nice little report, actually two reports, one basically saying how, how at what kind of risk you are, your network is. And then the other one would be like a, a report print out of like your your um, your traffic, like all your packets of data, like actually printed out on a sheet. Then that way you could actually go through and sort them by, you know, which one's highest risk and which one's lowest risk and that kind of thing. 
So yeah. it's a very, very nice service, but there's stuff like that that's out there. There's, I know there's other companies that offer that as well. So security is a very, it's a very new, um, I think field for, especially for networking, but I think it's going to become more of a, it needs to be done in the future just because of all the, you know, everything's being connected nowadays. So that's, that's going to be a big issue. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we were talking to a, uh, a guest the other day, Joe, and they were talking, I think the, the stat he gave out was like 3 billion smart devices out there now. I mean, it's just mm-hmm. ludicrous when you think about that number, but you know, so yeah. much data. And then as we start to learn how to utilize this data better in plants and make better decisions, you know, more and more people are going to want to, well, can you get this from that? Can you get this from that? So, next, you know, these networks right. are going to get full quick and the amount of data we're moving is unbelievable. So yes. you're all over it, man. Security is important. That sounds like a really cool service from Rockwell, um, mm-hmm. you know, to definitely, because it sounds like that gives you somewhat of a, of a game plan that you can move forward to, to attack the problems or the risk areas in your plant versus just, you know, having to start with a blank sheet of paper. That can be intimidating. Yep. Yep, absolutely. <clears throat> cool, man. So you you've been doing this for a while. What do you see out there? Any common themes from a from a network assessment standpoint that you see as low hanging fruit from a security standpoint? Um, from security standpoint, um, you know, again, again, unman a lot of unmanaged switches, a lot of unlocked cabinets, a lot of easy access to switches in the field next to machines. Uh, that's 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 a very that's a very common problem with a lot of industry. It doesn't matter what the industry is. It's pretty much across the platform. What about, um, what about just regular stuff, Joe? I mean, you're, you're, you're talking about excessive wiring and cables and just, it's just switches. What do you, I yeah. mean, what are the, what about those areas? Uh, physical cabling is, is a huge issue. Um, I know a lot of people, they think that, you know, well, we've got enough cable here. Let's just coil up a few coils and leave it in the cabinet. And, you know, then they got extra extra cable in case they need to move something somewhere or whatever. Right. And sometimes that's a good idea, but sometimes it's really not because, you you know, that with any kind of cable type like fiber or even copper, it only has a certain distance that it can go. Right. Like copper is is limited to three hundred and thirty three feet. I think it's one hundred meters, something like that. So you can only go so far with copper. So that's that's things you need to consider when you're, you you know, when these guys are running these cables and stuff and coiling them up like that. Like, is that too much cable? And, you know, the longer your run is, you're going to lose a little bit or you're going to have a little bit of increased latency. The more feet you add on to that cable. Right. So it's things like that that they need to really pay attention to. And then connector ends like the little connectors you actually put on. Some of them are the cheap plastic crimp on connectors that are pretty bad. Um and then I've seen some people go way overboard where they buy those like $30, you know, real nice, um, you know, cat five E or cat six, um, crimped on ends where they actually like screw terminal in the really nice metal, you know what I mean? The ground real well. So it, it just depends on your application, obviously, but you really need a strong physical layout before you can continue with, okay, now I've got it physically mapped out. Now I've got it. I've, I'm perfect on the physical side. Now I'm going to move on to the logical side, right? So you need to understand that you have to have a strong backbone and, and that's very important to have the proper network and industry. Right. And I know too, Joe, I've seen in some cases, you know, I've been in plants where, you know, you see the Best Buy switches, you know, out on the floor or, or sometimes the network area or rooms or a closet. You know, it's, there's, there's no heater and there's no cooling in there. You know, just, just, there's cakes of, of dust just standing on top of these devices. So, I mean, just yep. understanding that this is important. You know, you're moving your data with these devices and not just letting any, anything enter that system, man. Yep. Absolutely. Great stuff. What about wireless, man? When you're talking about assessments, you know, more and more customers and, and or end users are starting to use wireless technology how how does that play into a network assessment so on the network assessment side for like i said again i'm i'm doing this for rockwell um it's going to be different for other people i don't really do much with wireless now have i yes i've done some wireless in the past industrial not a lot of it i'm very I'm, i'm a very 
I guess I want to say I'm an amateur when it comes to wireless in the industry. Um, home stuff, I'm very good with. I do know that you're really going to use wireless when there's really no way to use wired connections, right? Like if you're outside and let's just say like a, a wood yard of a paper mill, that's really a good application for wireless. You can put a wireless antenna way up high somewhere and you'd be able to communicate to your, you know, cranes or whatever you're using to move things around or, you know, that kind of a scenario. Um, but that also can be locked down and secured where only certain devices where they use like um, access control lists where a certain device can only talk to another certain device, right? Where they actually keep it so that you can't really flood that network or piggyback off that wireless using security um, like your, um, even like on your home routers and stuff like that, you would use certain types of security protocols to keep people from getting into your wireless network, right? Same idea for industry. Gotcha. So yeah, it's it's a very big thing. This network assessment really concentrates on the physical side of wired networks. And I see a little bit of it here and there, but for the most part within a lot of the, the places that I go to with all the plants that I go to, I don't see them using wireless very often. It's, it's, again, it's, it's a specific application. So you would only use it in certain types of uh, business. Right. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, that, that helps, man. I mean, we, we do hear, you know, you see a lot more uh, wireless devices being developed. You, you know, at some point they're going to enter, you know, industry and they're, they're trying to break through and some already have. I'm just curious, you know, is that part of a standard assessment now? But it makes perfect sense on, hey, you want to focus on the physical media, what's there, understand the inherent risk and, and address that right. and then address the wireless a, as a complete separate entity. Uh, exactly. So, at, you know, at some yep. point, the two, I think, will probably start getting closer and closer to, to each other. And maybe yep. more from a security side, definitely they would uh, because, yep. you know, the, the risks are the same. So, uh, man, this has been awesome, Joe. You really impact a ton of information for our, for our listeners today. And we call it eco Ask Why for a reason, brother. And we, we have to get to the why, at, and we usually do that at the end. So, you know, why, if you for that listener out there, why is understanding your network so crucial for a success, successful operation of a business, man, in the future? Um, Like I said before, it's it's a very... You got to have a smooth flowing network and it, it needs to be designed correctly too. You need to, you need to follow like the CPWE standards. Um, and I'd have to look that up to see what that actually stands for again. But um, basically what it is, is it's a standard that was developed to allow you to help you lay out your, in, your network in the industry. And again, it goes into that demilitarized zone and then shifts all the way down to the le different levels so that you understand how it should flow properly um, and you can build in redundancy and all that kind of thing. But again, it's, it's very critical to understand all that, you know, otherwise you're not going to have any operational success. So, you know, not overloading your network and making sure the architecture is good. It's just, that's the key to really making sure you have a strong backbone. That's it's, it's always important and to make sure you have it segregated as well. Right. So like, again, I've been to certain customers where they actually have their plant land and their operating land on the same switches. Like everything is on the same network. It's like, no, you don't want to do that. You actually want to keep these separated. Then that way there's, it's more secure. So you know, it's it's very important to just understand all that as a whole and laying it out properly is a very, very big key to success. No doubt, buddy. You have to understand where you're at so that you can know how to improve moving forward. So this is great. This is a, a wonderful information that you've shared today, Joe. I think everybody has a better understanding of network assessments, why they're important, and definitely, uh, hopefully they you've convinced a few people to move forward my friend to taking action because if you get ahead of it now uh, you're only setting yourself up for success in the future so thank you for taking so much time with us today joe and the wisdom the insight it was wonderful man yeah absolutely chris i appreciate it man thank you for listening to eco ask why this show is supported ad free by electrical equipment company eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. 
please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y dot com.